Hello, this is Bill Farmer, 5th District Council member, welcoming you to another very special edition of Lexplore. Today we're at Ashland and Henry Clay Estate, and as much of an advocate as I am for public art, we're getting ready to have big public art here in public at the Henry Clay Estate. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. I've been joined by Jim Clark. Jim, thank you. Of course. You have done such a great job. I would just call you a Lexingtonian at this point. Well, thank you. Which is, to me, a high <laughs> honor, because you have done a couple of things, but you have really done a lot here for the Henry Clay Estate and the Foundation and all the programming here. And Others may not take note, but I have, and I really appreciate mm. your work. Thank you. I and appreciate that. You exhibit new things every day, and today is a great day for yep. the estate. It's taken five months to get here, but it's been worth the wait. Uh, I need to say that the Corridors Commission has, has helped with public art on several different corridors. And Jim came to the commission and asked for some help with this, and we were able to, to find a way to be of service. And today you're installing, I guess, two rather large artworks? The two large pieces by John Henry, and then a smaller, more horizontal piece by John Henry. All here on the property? Yes. And literally, you are activating this property in a way never before, as far as I can tell. Well, and it's it's a place people love to come to, yes, and sir. we're giving them another reason to come back, and also um, giving them a new way to look at it, um, because Henry Clay was incredibly progressive and yes. ahead of his time, and he was somebody who wanted to bring Kentucky to the world and the world to Kentucky, so we're sort of doing that with... Yeah. John Henry's installation. Um, John is a native Lexingtonian. Yes, sir. And went to UK. Great story. And then he's gone on to the world. He's shown these large monumental works all over the world, but has never been shown here. That's, I've forgotten that part of this, yes. Yeah. Because he really has never been showcased here or exhibited here. He's had or acknowledged. Um, smaller work, like yes. Ann Tower Gowrie did an exhibit of the uh, tabletop pieces, the smaller sort of gallery pieces. Sure. But and that's when I first became first came here. aware of John Henry. Yes. Um, and then saw his monumental works and thought we needed to do that. So today here we you're having donations from Will Height Limited to, to bring their expertise here, which they do great work. They're yes. consummate people what they're doing. But before this you had to get money set aside and a place set aside and the, and the plinths put in place deep enough into the ground to hold the tonnage that's going up here. Yes, the one behind us is 32,000 pounds and the one that'll be on the other side of the estate is 37,000 pounds. So these things are countersunk like two or three feet deep or how deep are they? I have no idea. Uh, not about eight inches below the surface. No kidding, I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. And so then this will go on and they're taking their good time here yes. to center this and make sure it's level, it strikes me. They're working hard to make this I thing level. I hope so, yes. Well, it seems <laughs> like it. Now, are these static structures? Do yes. they move? they are static. They are static. Yes. But this is going to be tall, tall. Uh, 51 okay. feet tall, and the other one is 70 feet tall. So this will, this will challenge the canopy here, won't it? Yeah. Actually, if I did it correctly yes, in, in siding the work, it should, the trees should frame it, and the perspective, it, they should look like they really fit in that space. Well, in and this without instance, standing out too much. You'll see this, this will have a dramatic effect yes. on this, what I call a glade here. Yeah. But this is part of what people think of as the estate, and this is kind of the excess parking area. Yeah. And it's also the most enjoyed area, too. Yes. Not, not that the house and the grounds and the garden aren't. But yeah. people kind of think of this, of this as their space? Well, and this space here is quite often, especially going down towards the driveway, is where we have our ultimate Frisbee people or football play really? you know, going on. So I this I've seen that the, on some weekends, yeah. now I think about it. You're yeah. right. But this is the area that we um, sort of allow to be more active. Good. As opposed to the back of the house, which we want to be more quiet. Um, 
you know. that goes to the interpretation of what's going on in the house. Yes. That makes great sense. Yes. I never had thought of that, but that really does make and sense actually, about that's how you interpret. And how we cite it, the two pieces, is that if you've come to take a tour in the house, you will not see these sculptures. You only see this one driving up and the other one when you're on Richmond Road. Yes. But it really isn't going to interfere with the narrative of the experience inside the house. Of that part of what yep. you do. Yep. But this is a whole other activation. Yes. Yep. And you, you alluded to it, but I love that you're bringing something so new to a place so venerate. Yes. And it will show up. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, and some people think that you know, the contemporary work doesn't fit in historic properties, except it's been done all over the world. The Palace of Versailles commissions artists every year. Continually, yeah. And then uh, also Chatsworth, which is um, outside of London. It's the Duke of Devonshire's um, ancestral home, um, has an annual contemporary art exhibit, uh, large-scale works on their property. So yeah. it's something that's been going on for a long time. And also, the, there's a lot of historic properties that find a way to work with contemporary artists to really draw out themes um, mm -hmm. for the house in terms of bringing, you know, whatever their historical perspective is to the present day and show sort of a continuum. You know what? That, so, given your, your campus here, you're unique yeah. because you do have room to have other interpretive things. Yes. And you did have kind of the wooden sculpture up here in the spring. Was it, it in the spring? When was it? In the, the fall, fall last year. It was about six months that it was up. Yeah. yeah. And people looked at it, drove by it, got out it, yep. got out, played on it. Yep. I saw kids playing on yep. it. I mean, that's kind of, this is not that kind of thing here. No, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard to get up on these, these things. But but you you had to, I guess, first go to your board and say, let's let's do something totally different. Yep. And then you went to the public or your your public and asked for help and you, and right. you have received generous donations yes. from several folks. Yes. Which we can acknowledge, you can acknowledge, but um, without folks of vision like yourself and the people who are gonna help, you can't have something strategic like this happen. Yeah. And I think, you know. Well, and that's where the first person I went to is Mary Quinn Raymer at Visit Lex. Yes. And uh, they've always been supportive, obviously. As a historic property, we are a draw for tourists. Yes, sir. You know, we do anywhere from 13 to 14,000 people a year coming through. Um, so she really um, helped get this going by uh, making a significant uh, contribution. And, I had forgotten you know, that from earlier conversation. Yeah. And then Kentucky Bank um, and Louis. Yes. Did so a great job. Yes. And they're local too. Yes. And to the neighborhood, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. And Mount Mount Brilliant Farm kicked in a significant. Great. No yes. kidding. Well, yes. are these? I'm assuming that all these things are your patrons are listed on the website or something. Yes. People want to know who, who yes. was kind enough to help out besides those in the Corridors Commission yeah. and others who still can step up. Would be my yeah. thought. Because I but, and I think there's a lot of people here and institutions that are interested in uh, contemporary expression. Yes, sir. Um, but also are supportive of historic properties. So it's a nice mixing of the two, and um, hopefully it'll pay off. I, I believe that it will. It's just going to, we're here kind of at the beginning of them assembling this. I bet this yeah. will take hours to assemble. Yes. And is Hopefully it, not that many hours, but yes. <laughs> is, it, is it to get both of them installed today? That is our goal, but I, I'm... If we can get this one up, I'll be happy. And then we'll probably have to wait till Friday to do the other one. Well, and really, you had to dodge a lot of wet weather just to get here today. Well, and that's why it took five months. We did not have enough consecutive dry days. Um, and also, there was a lot of thunderstorms, which obviously you're not going to erect metal sculptures during in that. No, yeah. But the ground was so soft that we couldn't have the crane or the trucks come on the property. No. And they're doing a respectful job of just kind of yes. staying in this area and staying close to what's going on. Yep. But there's a lot of activity behind us here. Yep. I mean, there's several professionals from Wilhite and from the yep. John Henry sculpting yep. truck, which I love, by the way. Yes. <laughs> that they have brought it in its here, yep. ready to go. Well, and, and we really could not have done this without Wilhite Limited. Um, you know, the crane service is just uh, an incredible uh, well, donation. They're, they're consummate yes. in what they do and, and really great at it. But I like your description of Mary Quinn. Mary Quinn understands what makes Lexington interesting tomorrow. 
Yes. Which is the product she's selling, yeah. and you are too. Yes. So I appreciate that we found a way to weave some public art into one of the greatest institutions of Lexington. And I don't know. What, they're going to take some more pictures and walk around and, and I don't know, we may have to visit again when it's all said and done or something, but you, you've done it a should. great thing. I mean, once, once they're all up, it's going to have a very different feel and um, I think people will be surprised. Of, even though they're contemporary, um, there's a, a drama to them that sort of transcends uh, whether or not it's contemporary. Well, you'd added a, a wooden sculpture at the front in the winter. Right. Uh, and that has brought people. That, yes. that has become a noted point on yes. the camera or on yeah. the farm. Yes. And these two will also. Yeah. And I think you get a whole different kind of viewership or interest than ever before. Yeah. I know just in driving by, people are aware. Well, in working uh, with Justin Roberts, who's a Kentucky craft artist, yes. who worked with us to do the um, waddle fence that is surrounds our hemp plot. I just saw. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So he did a couple of other things around the property using willow, and um, and one is just purely a sculptural form um, with willow saplings. Are you going to have a little self-directed tour? We are re, um, redesigning our grounds tour to include yeah. the art um, as well as information about the hemp uh, plot and Which is other great. things that are going on on the grounds. So, I mean, it's a great um, combination of you know, from landscape to art in the landscape to how Henry Clay used the property in his day. In a um, forward way, in a yeah. thinking ma yeah. manner. This was a, as much as, si it was a science station later, but it was a science place yeah. when he was here too. Well, and also, um, and that's one of the things that I point out in terms of uh, having these large sculptures on the property, um, which are cultural e expressions, seemingly set against a natural expression except this is not a natural expression. This landscape was entirely curated and developed by Henry Clay. It was laid out in a very specific way. So in many respects, it's like a very large um, sculptural form yes. that these works are now sitting in. But this by no means is a natural environment. It's all a form of cultural expression. Well, I mean you're noted for so many great things, including this garden we're standing next to. Right. And yes. the lawn out there, just to everything. And it's just in the ginkgo tree. We'll yep. roll in there and have a little something to eat and roll on back out. Yep. yep. So will there be yep. anything social going on around these things throughout the rest of the summer? Or Because these will be here for a year, isn't that correct? These, yes, nine months to 12 months. It depends okay. on other exhibitions that John has coming up. how wet the so. ground is. And how wet the ground is. So. <laughs> well, could it yes. be <laughs> But, but yeah, we will have some events, um, and we are waiting on word to see when uh, John Henry can come up um, from Florida. That'd be worthy um, to be here for that. Because he actually is um, uh, relocating his studio from Chattanooga to um, outside of Tampa, Florida. Wow. So he has been otherwise occupied with that move while all this is going on. So uh, we're hoping that he'll find time to come up here and we'll have some sort of celebration. But we also want to have an artist talk because um, in addition to how we've worked for now that we're on the Public Art Commission, right? Um, I think this will be a real opportunity to have a, a public That's session right. where people can talk to John about his work and also talk about other things that are going on in public art. There is a Public Art Commission, yes, yep. there is. It's brand new. <laughs> More to talk about. Yes. And a great, that's a great thought in terms of education and outreach there because yeah. There are, there are all kinds of stories to tell yep. that can be told. And then you've, you've teased me with a little bit of merchandise, so you're going to have a, a couple of uh, posters or something? We will something. have the poster mm -hmm. um, called Monumental John Henry at Ashland. Good. Um, and um, which actually will feature the piece that's about to go up right now. And then we also have a large monograph on uh, John's work. Uh, that oh. he's made available to us that'll be in the bookstore. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Come on, no t-shirts and koozies? Come on. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we don't know. I'm not, I'm not in marketing. It's I don't opening know day. <laughs> thank you for all you do for Lexington. Oh, and thank you. especially for the estate. Yeah. So, if something comes up, we need to know about it, please just let me know. I will. And thank, thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Let me just encourage all of you all to come to the Henry Clay Estate. I've just spoken with Jim Wilhite, Wilhite Limited. They're assembling all this right now. Actually, the base 
has the, the, the screw part put into it, they put big bolts on top of it and lock it all down. And when it's all done, it'll be 50 or 70 feet tall, as will the other one. Spend a few minutes in the 5th District on Richmond Road. I'm Bill Farmer from Westport. Thank you very much.